Hi, so LAC Limited is coming up with its IPO this week at a price band of Rs. 902 and Rs. 969. Many interested investors might be wondering whether this is the right price to pay. But how do you value an insurance company? That is what I am going to explain to you in this video. We are going to learn to value an insurance company using my proprietary framework called as distance to market metric. But before I get started with that, let me clarify that this video is purely in the interest of education. It's purely meant for educational purposes and it is not a investment advice. I am not a SEBI registered research analyst and this video or any part of it should not be construed as an investment advice. With that, let's get started. As I start, let us understand why is it that we cannot use the traditional P ratio based approach to valuing a life insurance company. And that is because one of the key components of income statement of an insurance company is the investment income. And life insurance companies report their investment income on the basis of realized gains. And these numbers can fluctuate year to year because of market factors and the timing of sale of your investment. Besides, another in critical item is changes in value of actual liabilities and these numbers also get affected when interest rate changes. So that is why we generally don't use income statement based approach to valuing insurance. Then what else do we do? So for that, let's first understand the various components of an insurance company's financial statement. Think of an insurance company's equity value as a jar. Now first thing we need to understand is what is this jar filled up of? The first component is adjusted net worth. Adjusted net worth is simply the value of asset minus the liability. The only difference is the assets are measured as per the IRDA norms and not as per the accounting approach, what you take from the balance sheet. That's why we call it as adjusted net worth. The next component that we have here is value in force. Value in force is simply the present value of profits from existing business. About the policies that are currently in force, whatever profit we are going to be earning, what is the present value of that profit that accrues to the equity shareholder. If you don't understand the concept of present value, it's okay. For now, just understand that this number basically refers to the value addition or va addition to the equity value on account of policies that are currently in force. And this value in force and adjusted net worth put together, we call it as embedded value. It's okay if you don't know how to calculate this embedded value because insurance companies themselves compute this number, get it certified by an actuary and then they report it. So we understood one part of the valuation here. So what's the other part of the jar is filled with? Now this part is filled with value from future business. That is policies that are currently not existing. The policies that we're going to underwrite in future and these policies will also contribute to our profits and add value to the equity. Well. And that's the number we are talking about here. But how do we measure this number? At the end of the day, even embedded value calculation is too difficult and embedded value comes from policies currently in force. And the value of future business is going to come from policies that doesn't even exist. Calculating this is pretty complicated and I would say it's almost impossible for an outsider who doesn't have data that are required for this. So what do then analysts do? So we don't calculate this. Analysts therefore come up with a relative valuation metric called as price to embedded value. So here we are going to divide price upon embedded value. The idea here is very simple. The more the jar is filled up with the embedded value, the better it is. In other terms, if the embedded value ratio, that is the price to embedded value ratio is less, then it is cheaper. So here I have two companies, AKG Insurance and NIC Insurance. If you think about it, NIC Insurance has a ratio of five times, whereas AKG is only two X. So we are going to conclude that AKG is cheaper compared to NIC. But this approach has a problem here. What's the problem? Think about two differently sized jars, right? So when you're comparing two companies which are different in size, this metric can be misleading. Why is that? Because this jar is going to be filled up by a glass. So this metaphorical jar is going to get up filled up by a metaphorical glass. What is this metaphorical glass called? It's the value of new business. So every year insurance companies underwrite more policies. These policies contribute more value to the embedded value, isn't it? So that is what the value of new business indicates. It's the embedded value that is flowing from the businesses that were underwritten during the year. Now think of this. 
if you are going to fill up a jar with two glasses a big jar and a small jar which of the two jars do you think is going to get filled up fast now don't rush to conclusion because it's not as straightforward it depends on another factor which is how much the jars are already filled and what's the size of the glass because the two glasses need not be of same size in other words the value of new business that flows into a company need not be same for two different companies so what do we do here this is where i've come up with my proprietary metric called as distance to market cap metaphorically speaking again the distance to market cap is very simply how many glasses do you need to fill up this metaphorical jar right so in other words how many years is it going to take if you are going to generate the same value of new business over a period of time how many years would it take to fill up this jar now there are two models here the first model is a no growth model and that means we're going to assume that the value of new business remains constant all through in that case it's pretty common sense approach here to explain how to calculate the distance to market cap it's simply you take the equity value from there reduce the embedded value so we know the gap that needs to be filled and divided by the value of new business earned during the year that will give you a metric that's almost like what is the number of years it would take for the embedded value to reach the current market value now of course companies value of new business is not going to remain static it would grow in that case we have one more model here which is the constant growth model so this one the mathematics gets a little complicated so i'll not get into explaining this in detail at least not in this video but this is one more model we can factor in with when there is a constant growth rate but let me go back to the original model that we had the distance to market cap without any growth in value of new business so let's try to understand how this is used in real life or how you can apply this in real life so let me take the case of hdfc life here so when i look at hdfc life this company as on may 1 2022 had a market cap of 1230 billion and its embedded value was 300.5 billion so that means the gap we are talking about is around 930 billion and the value of new business that they generated during fy 22 is 26.8 billion so if i have to look at the distance to market cap it is going to be 1230 minus 300 divided by 26.8 which is roughly 35 years that's the number we are coming into now that we have understood how to calculate it let us see how to use it in real life and how does it compare to price to embedded value ratio which most analysts as on date use so let's first compare it with all the listed insurance companies here so in this table i have the numbers of three listed indian life insurance companies as well as the numbers of uh, lic limited here Now LIC numbers are based on upper band of the IPO price and LIC has not published its FY 2022 value of new business which I am here abbreviating as VNB it is my estimate that it is likely to be 41.2 billion rupees So now let us see you know if you are going to use a price to embedded value ratio how does the number compare Under price to embedded value the industry average is 3.1 and among them HDFC life is at much higher at 4.1 and lac limited is looking way too cheaper at 1.1x in price to embedded value ratio now let's see how does this compare with our distance to market cap ratio when i look at the distance to market cap ratio the average for the industry is 24.8x lac still looks cheaper than the market at 14.7 but you would notice that you know the discount is not that steep 3.3 or 3 versus 1.1 that's almost 1/3 here the discount doesn't look that steep that is number 1 because we are factoring in for the value of new business that they are generating and when you look at the other three companies definitely one thing that's clear is hdfc life even in, and the d2m metric looks pretty expensive compared to others but the interesting thing you would notice between sbi life and icsa pro life when you look at price to embedded value sbi life looks expensive than icsi uh, pro life but when you look at our d2m metric SBI Life actually looks cheaper than ICICI Pro Life again. Now, why do we have so much variation in these D2M metric, and uh, what does that tell us? I mean, is there any justification for such a huge variation? Uh, if you look at the D2M metric that I'm using here, this is the no growth model, but in reality there are growth rates. PNB grows, and market would obviously prefer to pay a higher amount for companies that are growing faster. 
So let's do one thing. Let's compare these numbers or at least read side by side with the VNB growth rates. When I look at the VNB growth rate, one thing that's getting clear here, at least among the three listed companies is that HDFC life does not rank very high. It's in fact has very low growth rate compared to other two players, both for last year as well as five year CAGR when I look at it. And despite that, it has a very high DTM metric. That makes me conclude that HDFC life is perhaps overvalued compared to other companies. Again, let me clarify, don't take it as an investment advice. This is purely for educational purposes. Now, LAC did not give us this information on VNB growth rate or fire CAGA. They just started calculating this as they began their IPO process. So we don't have the numbers here. So how do we come to conclusion about LAC? When you look at LAC, one information I noticed in their prospectors is that they had mentioned that their insurance uh, first year premium, the new business premium grew at 14% CAGR compared to other private players who grew at 18% CAGR. So that's a 4% difference between LIC and others. LIC is underperforming. We don't know the VNB differential, but if I assume that the same 4% difference exists in VNB, that's the assumption I'm making here. When I assume that, or I took that assumption and I ran a differential analysis on the equation that I have there on modified D, and what I noticed is that a 4% reduction in growth rate translates to a four point or a four year reduction in the distance to market. Now, if I exclude a HDFC, which seems utterly overvalued, I am going to take SBA and ICSA and take, let's say 20 as the industry benchmark. And if I take 20 as the industry benchmark, then for LIC, we should say, you know, a fair number looks like 16, because as I just said, a 4% lower growth rate uh, as per our differential analysis gives us a four point reduction justification in D2M. And when you compare that with LAC's actual number, uh, I shouldn't say actual number, estimated number, that number is 14.7. So it looks like at current valuation, LAC is pretty competitively valued. But one very big qualification here, keep in mind, the VNB number is, that I'm using for LAC is my personal estimate. This is not the actual number. If this number is wrong, if this number is significantly wrong, then our conclusion could be very wrong here. All right. Hope you found the video useful and hope you understood the logic behind the distance to market cap. I hope you appreciate that it's actually a pretty common sense logic. There is not really complicated mathematics involved here. And before I conclude, let me reiterate, this video is purely for educational purposes. Please do not take it as investment recommendation. If you're considering whether to invest or not in LIC IPO, please reach out to your registered investment advisor or your broker, get their consultation. Thank you very much. See you next time with another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.